and prohibits guns in sensitive places and requires background checks on all ammunition purchases. Statute means what it says. It says that a convicted felon cannot possess a firearm. I'd like to thank the leaders and members of the House and Senate for working together to get this done. I especially want to thank the families. It doesn't say he can't sell a firearm that the government is possessing on his behalf. ATF is currently asking the Supreme Court to consider a different case that invalidated their unlawful rule prohibiting bump stocks. Supreme Court overturned bump stock prohibition ruling. During the time that Donald Trump was in office, the Justice Department made a request to the Supreme Court, asking them to review a judgment made by an appeals court that overturned a federal prohibition on so-called bump stocks. The request was made in light of the High Court's repeated refusals to overturn verdicts that uphold the device limitation. Specifically, the motion was made in light of the High Court's decision in October to not accept a challenge to the federal prohibition, which was one of the court's previous refusals. To run enhanced background checks on young people under 21 trying to buy a firearm. This government can protect its own people except for 36 out of every 100,000 for murders. Types of disputes that would be settled by people yelling at each other, maybe engaging in a fist fight, are being settled with guns. I am just inspired by the next generation. I think it's a, a time for a big change. Since you rewrote the rules of asylum based on the perceived degree of violence in these countries. Selling more guns in the last three weeks than we did in the last eight months. But for me, and for most of you, here's what it really is. It's an important first step. When somebody bump fires, think of this as a bump fire stock and able to move. I'll be clear, this wasn't based on violence. This is ba based on threats, specifically to individuals, on gangs. Thanks to bump stocks, shooters can effectively fire semi-auto weapons continuously with just one pull of the trigger. In the most recent oral argument before the Supreme Court, the Solicitor General of the U.S., Elizabeth Prelegar, argued that rifles equipped with bump stocks together with other types of mash guns, posed a significant risk to public safety, and that Congress had legally banned ownership of such weapons. The filing states that the finding below breaches the statute's original meaning, creates a recognized circuit dispute, and endangers public safety. Additionally, the filing states that this disagreement puts the public in danger. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, the ATF, was deemed to lack the jurisdiction to designate the devices as mash guns, a designation that would have effectively outlawed them, according to the decision handed down by the appeal court in January. This decision was issued in light of the fact that the ATF was determined to lack the jurisdiction to designate the devices as machine guns. The Justice Department, on the other hand, contended that the bump stock prohibition had already been affirmed by three previous appellate courts prior to the ruling in the latest petition. After then-President Donald Trump asked for a review of bump stocks, which had been used in the mass massacre in Las Vegas a few months before, the ATF classified the accessories as mash guns in accordance with the National Firearms Act in 2018. This came about as a direct result of Trump's request. On the other hand, in January, the majority of the appeals court argued that the act did not protect bump stocks. Today, we say more than enough. We say more than enough. No Democrat has ever tried to get anybody's guns. I mean, that's just the lie that they tell, and y'all ought to stop perpetuating the lie. If we can reach compromise on guns, we ought to be able to reach compromise on other critical issues from veterans' health care. To have their firearms, which are being held by the government, transferred to a third party for the third party to sell. Atlanta, Buffalo, Uvalde. And for the shootings that happen every day in the streets that are mass shootings we don't even hear about. According to the judge who wrote the majority opinion, Jennifer Walker Elrod, a careful reading of the statutory language and careful consideration of the workings of a semi-auto firearm lead to the conclusion that a bump stock is excluded from the technical definition of mash gun, as stated in the Gun Control Act and National Firearms Act. This conclusion was reached by Judge Elrod after she carefully considered the workings of a semi-automatic firearm. The ATF determined in 2010 that bump stocks were essentially accessories or parts of weapons, and as such, they were not subject to the same laws as other types of firearms because of this determination. In response to the incident in Las Vegas that left over 50 people dead and hundreds injured, the Justice Department declared that the devices allow a shooter of a semi-automatic firearm 
to initiate a continuous firing cycle with a single pull of the trigger, which is equivalent to auto guns, ruling in favor of Harden. Based on the crucial information we have learned, it appears that the ATF has petitioned the Supreme Court to review recent decisions from six circuits that struck down the ATS rule on bump stocks. Notably, the Sixth Circuit ruled in the case of Harden v. Batiff that the ATF's final rule on bump stocks was completely invalid and unconstitutional, a decision that multiple courts of appeals have supported, claiming the ATF overstepped its authority in regulating bump stocks as mash guns. In response to this significant loss, the ATF has requested the Supreme Court to uphold its bump stock rule, arguing that it is consistent with the statutory language and valid. However, they decided not to seek an end bank review in the Sixth Circuit following the adverse ruling. One key issue in the case revolves around the concept of Chevron deference, which refers to judicial deference given to administrative decisions, usually for an agency to be provided. In contrast to Chevron deference, the Lindy rule of validity becomes essential in this case. It states that in criminal statutory interpretation, a court must apply any obscure or ambiguous laws in a way that is most advantageous to the people rather than an enforcement agency. Under the National Firearms Act, the panel of the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals was tasked with determining whether or not the use of a bump stock on a particular firearm, specifically AR-15s, qualified the bump stock itself as a mash gun. The court stated that this was a difficult issue to resolve, which caused reasonable jurists to reach different conclusions. In the end, they came to the conclusion that the steps being taken by the ATF regarding bump stocks were invalid. We are not finished. We are not finished. We are not finished. The submitted firearm brace, when attached to a firearm, does not convert that weapon to be fired from the shoulder and would not alter the classification. Not one more! Not one more! Not one more! Distribution of 10 to 40 million of these braces and the implementation of your rule. Did Congress pass a law? You specifically said that. Uh, but I said... The law. What, this, is manda what does mandatory mean? I'm trying to say that... It means that prosecutors get a choice. I would expect to see in the, the coming months and years is a lot of focus on whether or not enough places are deemed sensitive right now. It is important that we rule in favor of Harden, given the application of the Lindy rule to criminal cases. In this particular scenario, the employment of bump stocks as mash guns is prohibited by the Lindy rule. As a consequence of this, we overturn the judgment that was handed down by the district court and remand the case for further procedures that are in line with our ruling. Ambiguity in Bump Stock Classification According to the six circuits, the question of whether a bump stock constitutes a mash gun part relies on how one reads the National Firearm Act's definition of a mash gun. The argument centers on the phrases automatically and a single function of the trigger. Those courts of appeals that have faced this issue have divided on the answer, and the Supreme Court has not weighed in. They also stated that the viability of competing interpretations is exemplified not only by the myriad of conflicting judicial opinions on this issue, but also by the ATF's own flip-flop in its position. Because the statute is subject to more than one reasonable interpretation, it is ambiguous. So, in the Hardin case, the Sixth Circuit three-judge panel came to a different conclusion than we had previously seen by a Fifth Circuit Cargill panel, which was an N-Bank panel. They ultimately arrived at a similar decision, finding that the rule on bump stocks is invalid, but they approached it in different ways. In the Cargill case, the Fifth Circuit N-Bank panel found that the text of the NFA and GCA was very clear, expressly excluding bump stocks as mash guns. Then, later in that same opinion, the Fifth Circuit went on to say that even if the term was ambiguous, the rule of lenity should be used, not Chevron deference. So the third party can either keep them in trust or sell them and give the money to Mr. Henderson. James commented on the decision saying, she's pleased, remember the law as it stands strengthens requirements. And in many cases, the value of the firearms can be quite high. Now in the Hardin case, the Sixth Circuit ultimately found that there was some sort of ambiguity in the term mash gun, but they believed that the ambiguity would cause a situation or something like the rule of Lindy would be used, given the criminal implications attached to the GCA. They argued that Chevron deference should not be applied. In response to the Sixth Circuit's decision in the Hardin case, the ATF is now asking the Supreme Court to review this case. In the request, 
The question presented to the Supreme Court is whether a bump stock device is a mash gun as defined by 26 U.S.C. 5845 subsection B because it is designed and intended for use in converting a rifle into a mash gun, i.e., into a weapon that fires automatically more than one shot by a single function of the trigger. The ATF argues that the Sixth Circuit invoked the rule of lenity to hold that the National Firearms Act definition of a mash gun does not include bump stock devices. Cargill and Hardin Appeals The Sixth Circuit explicitly sided with the Fifth Circuit, which had previously ruled that bump stocks are not mash guns in a divided and bank decision. For the reasons outlined in the government's petition for a writ of certiorari in Cargill, the decision below is incorrect. The Sixth Circuit acknowledged that the issue of whether bump stocks are machine guns has divided the courts of appeal. The ATF is arguing before the Supreme Court that a semi-auto rifle modified with a bump stock is indeed capable of firing hundreds of bullets per minute with a single pull of the trigger, which is pretty typical of what you would expect the ATF to say. A rifle modified with a bump stock is a rifle modified as a mash gun as Congress defined that term because bump stocks create a weapon that fires automatically more than one shot by a single function of the trigger. The District Court, the Merits Panel, and the N-Bank Court all issued comprehensive opinions giving their respective views in full. Here, by contrast, the Sixth Circuit declined to repeat the intricacies of the dispute in light of the many pages of prior judicial writings, including in Cargill, already addressing all aspects of the issue. They then state that accordingly, the court should grant the petition for a writ of certiorari in Cargill, hold the petition in this case pending its disposition of Cargill, and then dispose of this petition as appropriate. So the ATF is filing a petition in the Hardin case, appealing the Sixth Circuit three-judge panel's decision in Hardin, but they are using it as an additional vehicle to advocate for the Supreme Court's review in a different case, the Cargill case, which is coming out of the Fifth Circuit. Many believe that Cargill has the best chance to get Supreme Court review and there is a preference for Cargill to be granted review among those supporting the Second Amendment rights. This situation is interesting because the ATF is now asking for review in multiple bump stock cases, but in the request for cert in the Hardin case, they are once again advocating for the Supreme Court to review the Cargill case. The Supreme Court's next term is set to begin in September and Cargill is already distributed for a conference. It is hoped that the Supreme Court recognizes that both sides want review in these cases and ultimately grants review in this case and the Cargill case. That's all for this video, folks. We'll see you next time.